on time. All right. We're good. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I didn't yeah. want to have you uh, waiting uh, too long, but I did want to get everyone kind of organized. So yeah, once no, we get started, uh, uh, we won't. Uh, So I probably wrote like this. Exactly. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna come up, say your name, your affiliation, and then spell your name. Is that right for everybody? Spell your name and then say your say your piece. Okay? So, um, but I want everyone up. Are you comfortable being on camera? If you are, then let's kind of flank it out a little bit. And then let's spread it out. So I don't want anybody standing behind me unless you're trying to hide. Do you want? I would think we should all be visible so we show the consolidated front. Are we all good now? Yeah. All right, we all good uh, out there? All right. All right, so I'm going to let y'all dictate uh, when we start, okay? You good whenever? Yeah, take your time. Y'all good? All right. My name is Patrick Martin. I'm a Charleston County School District high school English teacher, and I'm a parent of two Charleston County School District students, ages four and 16. Research shows that there is no single more important factor to ensure student success than a qualified and experienced teacher in every classroom. Sadly, right now in South Carolina, we continue to struggle to provide this for our students. Whether it's a school-based classified employee, such as a teacher assistant or a lead teacher, we're here today to promote a livable wage for Charleston educators. And we appreciate all the community support. They know that budgets are statements of value and they want to value those who work with children and invest in our students' education. Last year, in an attempt to overcome a significant shortage of teachers in Charleston County, HR Chief Bill Brigman established the Charleston County Teacher Compensation Task Force. They undertook a year-long intensive look at the current situation in Charleston County for teachers who were trying to afford to live in the communities they served. They discovered it would take $58,000 starting salary to allow teachers to afford housing in Charleston County. They recommended this starting salary to the board. While we could not get to $58,000 starting salary last year, the board did vote to increase the years of service of pay up to year 40, increase pay for teachers, which amounted to $5,000 pay increase and a $5,000 bonus funded by ESSER funds. This first step has halted the exodus of teachers from the classroom. It moved CCSD from 60 vacancies last year to just 15 this year. This has provided proof that compensation can alleviate the, tenter, the teacher retention and recruitment crisis that's plaguing our classrooms. And today we're here to say it's time for phase two. We are here today to support the recent budget proposal by Superintendent Huggins. Huggins. <laughs> we are here today to support the recent budget proposal by Superintendent Huggins, which hopefully marks an advancement towards the task force's objectives. We're here today to ask the board to accept the proposal which would incorporate the $5,000 ESSER funded bonus from last year into teacher salary pay scale all the way up to level 40 and increase school-based classified staff salaries up to 98 or 99% of market value. We're excited to be here today to thank the district and the board for their support last budget cycle and encourage them to work together to take the next step so our students can have this invaluable resource, a highly qualified and passionate educator. Last week, the district also proposed the weighted student formula that will help us navigate the post-ESSER budget issues and help our schools empower our educators and our students with funding that directly impacts their daily education. We acknowledge that this is not a new issue. The school board inherited a legacy of a long-standing issue that stemmed directly from the 2008 financial crisis. The world tightened its belts to survive the crash, but the stranglehold on educator compensation never let up. We quietly watched and waited to catch up with cost of living, but it never came. We are grateful today for all who are speaking with us that educators need to make a livable wage. The students are deserving of this investment. While the current board did not create the situation, they have made great efforts to repair it. But we're not there yet. We are asking the board today to support the district's budget proposal to ensure our students' needs are met. This year's budget must compensate all educators. 
any professional that spends their day in a school working with children must be paid a livable wage. This is not an either or conversation. We ask that the board uses this budget to answer the loud community outcry for both teacher and classified positions to earn a livable wage and that funding one does not come at the cost of funding another. This budget, alongside implementing a student weighted formula, is a strategic investment in the individuals and the resources pivotal to student success across our diverse county. This comprehensive approach ensures equitable educational outcomes, reflecting our commitment to every student's future in the varied landscapes of Charleston County. We expected financial challenges for the local school districts in the wake of diminishing ESSER funds, but the Charleston County School District has been proactive in their consideration of a weighted student-based funding model for the 2025 fiscal budget. This model seeks to ensure a fairer education and a fair allocation of funds by prioritizing students who require additional support, thereby better aligning resources with the diverse educational needs and complexities. This includes pupils in poverty, multilingual learners, and students with disabilities. We cannot forget the connection between well-resourced educational environments and the cultivation of diverse skilled workforce, which in turn enhances the local economy and attracts businesses. We look around and we see a Charleston that is much different than Charleston was 20 years ago. We celebrate the accolades of our booming economy, but we need to use this opportunity to also invest in the people who work with our children every day. The community has spoken loudly that this is a top priority. They want to see their values represented in the way that the school board votes on this year's budget. The board members campaigned on this very issue, and now the district is proposed, has proposed the right next step. The question today is, will they take it? Thank you. Hello, my name is Dorothy Jenkins, and I am a member of Mother Emanuel AME Church. I'm also a retired educator. And as a retired educator, I find that it's unacceptable for us to have multi-million dollar corporations, to have CEOs flying here, there, and everywhere, and there's not one of them who would be in that position without a teacher. There is no profession that can get started without an educator. We need to make sure that we invest in our young people and plant seeds that are required for them to do better. I want us to remember as a community that it's important for us to work together as a unified front, not only just for educators, but for staff members who are working in the school system from the secretary to the custodial worker to the cafeteria worker, all of those aspects are needed. Administrators, teachers, and the like. We work together in a unified front. I'd like us to remember as a community, our children are the best and the brightest of our world. And we need to make sure that we provide for them so that they can thrive economically. It's our responsibility as a community to share our resources all together. Thank you. Hello, my name is Daniel Brownstein. I'm a Mount Pleasant town councilman as well as a parent of two children who attend public schools in Charleston County. I'm here today because of many great teachers um, who inspired me when I was a young child. And then teachers were paid enough money to live in the same town where, where they taught. Here in Charleston and Mount Pleasant, the cost of living has become so great that many of our teachers commute into town. And I thought how tired they must be at the end of the day after teaching our children and then driving back home. And then I backed up a second and I thought, how tired are they in the morning when they get there at the beginning of the day after that commute? We have to make sure that every community of the Low Country and the Charleston area has an opportunity for people from all walks of life to participate and live in that community. In Mount Pleasant, we're trying to get more attainable and affordable housing um, that would help chip away at this problem. 
but even at the reduced price point that we're able to get it down to, three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars for a townhome, that's still beyond the reach of the average teacher. In fact, it's beyond the reach of our most experienced teachers. So it's really time for the school board to make sure that teachers are given the importance uh, that they deserve, because without them. We're, we are totally lost. They are the inspiration for our future, and we've got to make sure that we're treating them accordingly. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Willette Scott Ash. I'm standing here today as a retired teacher of Charleston County School District after 43 years of services. Also, I am the president of the Charleston County Education Association retired. I stand here today with the group to support the agenda that has already been presented to you by Mr. Patrick. I stand here because as a retired educator, even in retirement, our figures of salary never reach the digit that we deserve. To teach is to touch a life forever. And so our teachers deserve the increase in salary as well as they deserve all of the other benefits that should come with the increase. We labor hard. Many people think that teachers get a break because we have a long summer, but we work seven days a week because even on our weekends, we have lesson plans to fulfill, papers to correct, grades to record. So I stand today as a retired educator in support of my colleagues who are currently in the classroom, whether they are new or seasoned, they deserve the pay. Everybody not gonna stay as long as I did. I stayed a long time and I didn't know when I was gonna retire, but I did when the time came. So I wanna thank the news media today as you televise this and that the board will be listening to remember, we stand for educators, and they need to stand for educators as well. Thank you very much. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Megan Majeski. Um, I'm here to speak on behalf of classified workers within CCSD. Um, I, we appreciate being included in the current conversation and the current budget as far as increasing compensation but I wanted to kind of take it a step further and ask y'all to look at how um, our classified employees are paid. Um, we'll take for example, um, a TA, a student concern specialist, a parent liaison who has a bachelor's degree and 10 years of work experience. Their hourly rate would be $19.52 an hour. Um, not only is that you know, less than what they deserve to be paid, but we also have to consider that they work 190 days from the school year, but they're forced to take their payments stretched out over 12 months. So based on my calculations, once we figure in some uh, the, the mandatory 9% uh, withholding for retirement, um, you know, some health care withholdings and taxes, we're talking about them bringing in $850 twice a month. That is $1,700 a month. It is unfathomable that we can think that we can um, get the best and the brightest who have a passion for their jobs with that sort of offer. Um, and so one thing I would like to be considered in addition to in increasing the pay is that perhaps giving these employees who have, you know, once you work it out for 190 days, that would be maybe $29,000 a year maybe give those classified employees the option to take that pay for the hours worked versus stretching it out over 12 months. Let them budget for themselves and um, you know, perhaps get a second job over the summer. But a lot of these employees, if they're working 40 hours a week, they have children at home, they have to commute, there's no room to supplement that pay during the actual work days. Um, and that's all I wanted to say, thank you. Hello, I'm Julia Royal, it's R-O-Y-A-L-L, -L, and this is my 21st year in education, and I'm still passionate, and I love my job, and I want every 
educator that walks into our buildings to want to do the same, but we have to have a livable wage. I continue to see teachers deciding to leave education for other options from retail to serving tables um, to going into real estate or many other options because they're not making enough to live the way that they need to in Charleston County. So I would really like to encourage the board to please go for the $5,000 increase and take care of our classified employees as well. Thank you. And she's the top five teacher of the year. She's very humble. Do either of our students want to speak or no? Do you want to speak? You don't have to. I know Maya said no. No, you're good? All right. All right. Do you all have any questions? Sure. Anybody like to speak to that specifically? How much has the $5,000 increase helped over the last year? Um, so last year, the board uh, and, and the district worked really hard to come up with a budget that uh, provided teachers with a $5,000 pay increase and a $5,000 bonus funded by ESSER funds, which we're hoping to tie in this year. But the palpable evidence of this, I think, is just the climate and the culture in our classrooms and in our campuses. I think from the administration here at the district office all the way down to the classroom, uh, you can see that it has ignited a greater sense of value and importance of our teachers while also helping them pay their bills, afford groceries, and afford housing. It's allowed people, as you heard last year in the testimony, to have babies. People were holding off having their family, starting their families because they just weren't making enough money. You know that preschool and uh, is extremely expensive. People have now had that burden alleviated a little bit to be able to pay for some of that. Uh, and even at my own school, we've reignited the teacher cadet program, which is a, a, a groundbreaking program which uh, encourages students to expose themselves to the teaching profession. They can qualify perhaps even for the teacher fellow scholarship. And then so we're growing our teachers from the inside out. So we have 30 people at my school signed up for this program that only hosted four this year. So we're really excited from the top all the way down at the momentum, the climate, and the culture of uh, what's happened. Anybody else want to add to that? My name is oh. Hi, my name is Sydney Van Bullock. Um, there's a lot of things that the school board or the school district is responsible for. There's a lot of things that go into making our school successful. There's curriculum, there's supplies, but there's nothing that is more important to a child's education than the educators. So when you've got teachers leaving the classroom at the highest rate of all times, when you're seeing teachers leave mid-year at a higher rate than we've ever seen before, um, if you don't have the adults in the building, the certified, the educated adults in the building to teach these children, then what is the point of school? What, what could be more important? Um, teachers can teach, teachers know how to teach, but the one supply that we cannot run schools without our teachers and other educators. Um, when I was teaching, I had an assistant in my classroom and she taught alone just for the insurance. She did not make enough that her check really made any difference to her family, but the insurance was, was worth it for her. But that's, that is not a job. A job you should be making more than health insurance at your career and so we've got to take care of the adults that are taking care of our children if I could just add to I think one thing about this current budget push is that we have um, the teachers of Charleston County now have been essentially paid with a ten thousand dollar increase from last year so the five thousand dollar bonus um, has been built into their salary to the point where now that is something they rely on for child care and groceries and housing. So I know that the board feels the same way in conversations. Uh, when they look at the budget, it's not easy. And I know I don't envy their task, but I know in their hearts and from what they've told me, this is what they want to do, is they want to, one, make sure that our classified employees are compensated as well in a livable wage, 
but also make sure teachers don't take what essentially would be a pay cut of $5,000 without that compensation. W-I-L-L-E-T-T-E Scott S-C-O-T-T Ash A-S-H Thank you. All right. Okay. 